the Lamborghini Urus, the original and arguably still the best super SUV on the planet. An ideal package, some might say, thanks to its wild outlandish design, astonishing performance and practicality for all. On paper, it's perfection. In practice, it's become Lamborghini's most popular car, outselling everything else the company makes. But not everybody is convinced. The problem with the Lamborghini Urus and all high-performance SUVs is that they can never be as good as a normal high-performance car because of the way they're designed. If you're designing a proper high-performance car, it needs to be light and low and agile and intrinsically athletic. The Urus is none of those things. It's big, it's bulky, it's heavy. Fundamentally, it's flawed. And so I understand why the purists might hate this car, but what I want to find out is, can the Lamborghini Urus overcome its obvious disadvantages? Can it ever be enjoyed as a driver's car? And more broadly speaking, are super SUVs just a pointless waste of time? The problem with the Urus and rivals such as the new DBX 707 is that it has to be all things to all people. It has to be big and imposing, the way people like their cars in the modern age. It has to be spacious enough to accommodate a family and all their things, be full of creature comforts and have off-road abilities that most people will never use. These credentials make it an appealing family SUV, but at 1.6 meters tall and weighing 2,200 kilograms, they also make it a terrible Lamborghini. But I am a firm believer that every problem has a solution, and Lamborghini's engineers have a bunch of tricks up their sleeves. The biggest of which is the engine. It's an absolute monster. It's a four liter twin turbocharged V8 that knocks out 650 PS. Now that number is enormous on paper, but it doesn't quite reflect just how angry this car feels in real life. It's an absolute savage. You put your foot down and it just disappears. That power figure might have been surpassed by the new Aston DBX 707, but in real terms, the Urus feels just as rapid. In the world of super SUVs, 650 horsepower really is plenty. It'll do 0 to 62 in 3.6 seconds, which is basically Lamborghini hurricane territory. Top speed, nearly 190 miles an hour, which is just, well, it's just overkill. It's like driving a runaway train. The power to weight ratio in the Urus is absurd. It's 295 horsepower per ton. It's more than an Audi RS6. It's more than a Porsche 911 Carrera, for goodness sake. An essential part of any performance driving experience is the sound, and the Urus doesn't disappoint here either. It's the only Lambo to use a petrol particulate filter, and yet the noise it makes is glorious. Aggressive, with a stream of bangs and pops punctuating the raucous baritone from the quad pipes adorning the rear. If they don't see you coming, they will hear you. And this gearbox is hilarious as well. I'll just knock it into Corsa mode, which is the most aggressive setting. And particularly from second to third, you just get this violent gear change, which makes it so interesting to shift. There is a danger that when you're driving a car as quick as the Urus, especially in a straight line, that you start to think, oh, I'm just in a really tall Aventador. And then when you get to a corner, you realize, no, I'm just in a really small barn. So this thing does need phenomenal brakes. And luckily, it's got a set of 440 millimeter carbon ceramic discs, the biggest you get on any road car, gripped by 10 piston calipers, and they're just staggeringly effective. I always say that carbon ceramic brakes are a little bit overkill on a normal road car, but they're absolutely essential on the Urus. It's definitely one of the most impressive things about this car. In this area, it's superior to the DBX 707, which uses smaller front brakes. And that's crucial because getting the Euro slowed down before a corner is essential. Mass and a high center of gravity go against it. It shouldn't work. 
but somehow it does. It corners pretty much as well as, well, anything. And obviously a lot of that is down to the technology it uses. Active 48 volt anti-roll stabilization, which means that it just pushes down the outside wheels every time you go around a bend to keep it completely flat. I mean, it's witchcraft. Watch this, right? Big changes of direction. And yet, it's totally flat. And just look at how responsive it is. A lot of that is down to the fact that it uses rear wheel steering. So every time you go into a bend, it feels like it's a much smaller, much more agile, much more nimble car than you might think. Is it as fun as the DBX 707 or KN GT Turbo through the corners? I'd argue it's a fraction less entertaining. The best approach is to use those phenomenal brakes, get the car slowed down sufficiently before the corner, let the systems manage the mass through the bends before applying that prodigious power as you approach the exit. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you it is the most exciting car to drive in terms of the sophistication of its handling or the level of balance you can exploit between understeer and oversteer on the throttle or the level of feel and feedback you get from the steering wheel or any of those other intangibles that you might absorb from a dedicated driver's car. But is it fun? Is it interesting? Absolutely. As the original super SUV, the Urus is now under fire from countless rivals, all eager to emulate its success. But it holds its own despite the recent onslaught. You could argue there is no super SUV that quite offers the same blend of aggression, sound, theatricality and status. There's a good reason why so many car makers are tripping over themselves to come for the Urus's throne. In this segment, it's the king. Look, I get why this car might be perceived as totally ridiculous, why you might think it's the most irrational Lamborghini ever. But actually, it might be the most rational Lamborghini that there's ever been. This is a Lamborghini that you can actually enjoy with your friends and your family and all their stuff. Plus, it still does 80 to 90% of the performance stuff as well. I get why people think this doesn't make any sense at all, but to me, it makes all the sense in the world. 